G'day everyone, Tim from vMix here. And in this series, we've been looking at how to add inputs into a vMix production. Now an input is just any element that you want to use in your production. And in this video, we're going to be looking at IP cameras. IP cameras can be used to bring in a live camera feed into your production over a local network or even from a remote location using the internet. IP cameras can be quite affordable and a number of camcorders and network connected PTZ cameras support IP streaming. The most common form of stream that you'll get from a camera is an RTSP stream. So we're going to be going over that in this video. Now we're also hoping that SRT becomes a lot more popular uh, for use with camcorders and PTZ cameras and that sort of thing. So SRT is going to be much more reliable and far more higher quality than an RTSP. So hopefully in the future, you'll see more cameras support SRT and you can check out our SRT videos for more information about that or if it's the future and SRT is everywhere. Now, there are however many downsides to using an IP camera in live video production. This video is more for people who are trying to use their existing IP camera and not a recommendation for everyone to rush out and buy one. For video production in vMix, we will usually recommend using a capture device or perhaps an NDI source for your cameras. IP cameras can be unreliable and the quality isn't going to be nearly as good as a traditional capture option. They're going to have far more latency than hardwired cameras or NDI inputs, so it makes them very difficult to sync if you're using IP cameras with other traditional camera sources. These are best used for remote inputs when syncing with other cameras isn't going to be an issue. They can also be a little bit difficult to troubleshoot, especially if the camera is cheap, or if you bought it from some dodgy website or perhaps from the back of a ute in a 7-Eleven car park. Now, in order to add a camera, you'll just need to go to the add input menu and then go to stream slash SRT. So I'm going to do that just now. So go down to the left corner, add input. Then we go to stream slash SRT. Now, in more recent versions of vMix, we've added a VLC option from this drop down menu here, as you can see, VLC. So that's going to allow more types of RTSP to be used. And typically if it works in VLC and you use this option, it's going to work in vMix as well. So if you haven't used this before, you will need to follow the prompts to install it. So you'll be sent to this page here called installing VLC for vMix. You just need to click the latest version here and you'll be able to install it to your computer. And then you'll be able to use that option from vMix. Okay, so now it's time for the important part, the stream URL. Now, each camera manufacturer has a different way of accessing the video stream of the camera, which makes things confusing and a tad annoying sometimes. You'll need to check with your manufacturer to see what URL you're going to need to enter here. Now, it's going to typically be something like RTSP colon slash slash the IP address of the camera slash something. So this might be slash video slash stream one or slash H264 slash stream, or it might be something like slash stream slash super video awesome fun time slash video or something like that. So it can get a little bit crazy because they're all completely different. So once again, check with your manufacturer about what RTSP URL that you need to use. We don't know it, so you will need to talk to your manufacturer. So if you're having problems with you trying to access it and not working, check with your manufacturer. So although you can't see it, I do have a camera connected up here from my last video where I was talking about the ADA camera that has um, RTSP streaming. So I thought I would just use that again. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to add that. So I've already got some here that I've added before. So this is the ADA camera. As you can see, here's an example of an RTSP address. So I've got RTSP colon slash slash. That's the local network address of the camera. Then slash stream slash main. Now, as I mentioned before, that IP address is going to be different for you, especially if you're using an internet IP. Um, and even if it's a local one, it's most probably going to be not the same as what we're using. So you'll just need to make sure that you know the IP address of the camera on the network if you're using it locally. And of course, also that extension there, slash stream slash main is going to be different to your Sony or your Panasonic or all your other cameras that you're using. So make sure that you check with your manufacturer. I know I'm gonna to have to say that like 15 times in this video, but you know, it's gonna be worth it. So underneath that, you have the buffer. Now the network buffer in milliseconds can be configured to reduce jitter when receiving high latency network streams. For local streams, this should be set between zero and 500 milliseconds or 1,000 to 5,000 milliseconds for internet streams. Now the default here, as you can see, is set to 300 milliseconds, which is a good starting point for local streams and you can make adjustments from there. So once you're done, you can click okay down the bottom and start using it like a normal camera input. 
Now, as you can see here, my camera is now available in the production. Now, as I mentioned before, you know, we've got this camera coming in via Blackmagic card. So that's coming through extremely quickly from the camera. And as you can see here, I've got this one here set to a 300 millisecond delay. So when I do things, um, it's not going to be in sync. So as I mentioned before, it's hard to mix between normal cameras and IP cameras, especially if they're focused on the same thing. If this camera was pointed at something else in the office, like if I was showing you the petrol prices or something, then it would be fine. But yeah, because you're trying to match them, it's going to going to look a bit weird. So that's, um, that's something to keep in mind. All right, so now I'm going to quickly just go through and add the second camera, which is this PTZ Optics camera here that's hanging above my head. So if I go to add input, and then I go to the stream slash SRT section again, now I have this one already set here. So I have the URL, which is RTSP colon slash slash, and then 192.168.1.165, which is the IP address of the camera locally. And for their cameras, they just have uh, two streams available, slash one or slash two. Uh, slash one is a HD feed from the camera that I can use. So I'm just going to do that. So as you can see there, some cameras, some camera manufacturers make it a little bit simpler, just like one, whereas other ones make you know, longer things with stream slash underscore slash and all this kind of thing. So just keep that in mind um, that you'll need to check that out with the manufacturer. All right, so underneath that, we're just going to leave the buffer as is and I'm just going to click OK. Now, as you can see, this camera here is now coming in to the production. Now you'll see that I've got, there we go if we do it here like this, maybe, that's weird. So as you can see, the uh, the cameras here are now similar because these are both coming in via 300 millisecond latency on the stream. Uh, as you can see, this camera here, you can read this. This is my teleprompter here. Uh, this is my shoe up the top here, Amax 90 in Baroque Brown, uh, mouse pad over here. So yeah, my second camera coming in. So this might be an example of being able to, to kind of mix two cameras together because you can't really see what I'm doing. So you can kind of see this um, and it doesn't really matter about the latency. So that's kind of an example of that. So there you have it. That's how you can add an RTSP camera into vMix. Again, we don't typically recommend using IP cameras for professional productions though. Um, and also some cameras that support RTSP might just not work in vMix. There's nothing that we can do about that, especially really cheap ones or ones you bought in car parks. Now, if they work in VLC, they should work in vMix, but again, no guarantees about that. So if you do have any questions, please send us an email via the support page on vmix.com as it's impossible to go through diagnostic information through a YouTube comment. So thanks for watching and we'll stream you later. Thanks for watching. Click to watch another exciting vmix video or head to vmix.com for a free 60-day trial. See you later.